Bibles to go in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter number 16, we're working through these characters of the Bible and we're going to see, spend one more evening with Abraham at least and I want to see some things here in God's word, Genesis chapter number 16, we'll begin our reading in verse number one and I'm going to give you just a, a little uh, synopsis of the context here, Abraham is, um, Abraham has come through a number of things, his name is still Abram. His wife is still called Sarai, and they've not had a baby yet. God has promised them that their seed would be like the dust of the earth and uh, the sands of the sea, but they've not had one child yet. And years are passing, and he's getting up in years, and Sarah already knows that she's past the age of bearing children. Uh, Abraham still has a little more life in him, a few years, and God is putting them off. You know, I want you to know something. When God makes you wait, it's not punishment, but it's the necessity, and God's timing is perfect. And Abram, if you remember the story, Abram is promised that God will bless him, and he'll bless anybody that blesses him. That's an important thing to remember as we consider Israel. Uh, God has promised that he'll bless them that bless him and curse them that curse him. And the descendants of Abram are the Jewish people. And specifically, we find them in Israel. And we need to keep that in mind. God's promised to bless Abram. Abram moves uh, and sets up a, an altar to the land, the land that God has promised him. And Abram comes to a time of famine. And God's will in the Old Testament is always surrounding a place. And Abram, in fear and faithlessness, leaves Bethel leaves the place of the altar and he goes to Egypt. When he goes to Egypt, he gets in a big mess. It's that season in Egypt when he tells everybody, he tells, his, he tells Sarah, he says, you're beautiful. Don't let these folks know that you're my wife. They may kill me. Tell them you're my sister. And uh, if we, you remember the story, uh, God curses, literally curses and plagues the people of Egypt. The first Egyptian plague happens in the life of, uh, of Abram. And God plagues Egypt while Sarah is uh, there and while Abram is there and while Lot is there. They move out. They move out of Egypt. They're actually kicked out of Egypt. And there's a fight between Lot's herdsmen and Abram's herdsmen. And that fight is uh, something that really stirs Abram to do the right thing. He's determined to do the right thing, to say the right thing, to act the right way. He looks at his nephew Lot and he says, let there be no strife. Let there be no strife. And when he says, let there be no strife, he decides to trust the Lord. Now, as we continue our reading, we come to chapter number 16. In just a moment, you'll see that 10 years have passed. And during those 10 years, God in a mighty way blesses Abraham and blesses Sarah and blesses their family and God uses Abram in a mighty way and he develops a great reputation in the, in the land but the one thing that they're, greatest, they're, they're most concerned about an heir has not happened yet and after 10 years in, Egypt, at 10 years in Canaan uh, Abram makes and Sarah make some poor decisions and it really costs them. I want you to see what the Bible says in chapter number 16, verse number one. Now Sarah, Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. I want you to see what the Bible says in verse number three. 
And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. Let me pay attention to this phrase. After Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. After Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. Tonight's message is titled this. After ten years in Canaan, you did what? After ten years in Canaan, you did what? It's fascinating to me to look at the life of Abram. And you'd think that Abram by now had learned his lesson. Abram is 85 years old. Abram has seen God prove himself over and over and over again. And for the last 10 years after his, li- his previous stint in the world, away from God, lying and doing things his own way, he has now spent 10 years in Canaan land in the place of God's blessing. If you want to convert it to the way we live in Chill How, he's been going to church faithfully. He's been reading his Bible. He's been praying. God's been leading him and directing him. He's had peace and satisfaction and victory over sin. And now, 10 years has passed in the land of Canaan, in the land of victory. (laughs) And Abram allows his wife Sarai to direct him away from God's blessing, away from faithfulness, away from the will of God, the plan of God, trusting in God. And after 10 years in Canaan, Abram goes back to the world. Abram makes a terrible mistake. And folks, I want you to know something. It's not uncommon. It's not foreign. But it's always tragic when people who have experienced the blessing of God and the will of God and the peace of God and the direction of God turn their back on God's faithfulness and return to the world. After 10 years in Canaan, you did what? And I want to encourage you tonight. Your times of despair, your times of discouragement, your moments and seasons of waiting on God and yearning for God to move in whatever area it is that burdens you so dearly. I want to encourage you to do something. Don't give up on God. Don't quit waiting. Don't quit trusting. It is always wrong to do wrong. It's always right to do right. Rest in God. He'll prove himself faithful. After 10 years in Canaan, you did what? Abram's not alone in Bible characters who spent a length of time in God's will and around God's blessing who for a season of their life turned their back on God and trusted God. One that comes to my mind is the man David. The Bible teaches us that David was a man after God's own heart. David had been used of God to slay a lion and a bear. He'd been used of God to slay a giant. He'd been used of God and blessed of God to lead the nation of Israel. And David knew better than to take a second look at Bathsheba. And David knew better than to pursue her and allow what happened between he and her to happen. And David knew better than to cover his sin. And David knew better than to murder her husband. But after all those years of God's blessing, what did David do? He went right after the flesh. I'm reminded of Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived who made some of the most foolish decisions you could ever dream of. After all that time in God's blessing, knowing God's will, knowing the person of God and having such clarity and understanding, yet he still went after the flesh. I'm reminded of Peter, one of my favorite Bible characters. Peter's all the time sticking his foot in his mouth, making mistakes, but Peter, what'd Peter do? Peter had watched Jesus raise the dead. Peter had watched Jesus heal the sick. Peter had sat with Jesus at the Last Supper as Jesus preached and told his disciples that his body would be broken, that his blood would be shed. And when Jesus told Peter, hey, I've prayed for you, that your faith fail not, I've prayed for you 
He says, hey, look, Jesus, I'm ready to go with you even unto death. <laughs> Peter, in just a few minutes after that conversation, with a cowardly blow and a sword in his hand, will whack off Malchus's ear. <laughs> Jesus will bend down and pick it up and put it back on his head. And that same Peter, who'd watched Jesus perform all these miracles and knew what was going on, that same Peter would stand afar off and deny his Savior three times. He took a stand away from God's will. Sin always does the same things to believers. I want you to see and remember a few things about Abram's situation. You know what Abram did? Earlier, Abram, in a time of famine, he got scared he wasn't going to have enough to eat. But we understand God, where he leads, he will provide. You can rest in God's provision. You can rest in God's care. Famine got pretty big. It was exceeding great. He's like, I don't know. I'm going to have to move out of here. And Abram moved toward Egypt. He moved toward the world. Folks, I want you to know something. Fear and faithlessness... A failure to trust in God always moves us to the, toward the world. And earlier he went to Egypt. He told Sarah, don't tell them you're my wife. Tell them you're my sister. And in this passage of scripture, look what happens, verse number one. After 10 years in Canaan, you did what? Abraham went first, went back to the same place, Egypt. Verse one, the Bible says, now Sarai, Abram's wife, bear him no children. And she had an husband, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Who was the handmaid? Hagar. Where was she from? Egypt. Folks, I want you to know something. When you turn your back on trusting God, it always points you to the exact same place. You always go back towards the world. And every time the world promises you the world, promises you everything, but every time you turn your back on God and go toward the world, you're going to find it empty. You're going to find it awful. You're going to find it wrong. You're going to find it unfulfilling. You're going to find it harmful. The same place. When you go back to the world, you always go back to the same place. Oh, may God help us to not go back to Egypt. Number two, the same principles. What drove them to Egypt? The Bible says in verse number two, Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. What was she doing? The first thing she says, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. She says, God's, God's turned us off. He ain't going to keep his word. He's not going to keep his promise. If you ever think God's not going to keep his promise, you're wrong. He's going to be faithful every time. He says, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. What did she want him to do? She says, I want you to have Hagar. She says this, it may be that I may obtain children by her. What was Sarai's greatest interest? The will of God. No. I've circled in my Bible those two of the words in verse number two, I may. <laughs> I may. What Sarai really want? She wanted to fulfill the lust of her flesh. She wanted a baby. She's willing to do anything to get it. She says, God has kept me from having what I want and it may be that I may have a child if, Abram, you'll go and marry my handmaid, Hagar. It was a desperate time. Now, in this season, in this time, it was so important to a family that they had an heir. Oh, to have a male child was the greatest privilege and the most important thing that you could ever have. To have a male child in your family, an heir, it was so important. Sarah was desperate. She was desperate. But God had promised, I'm going to take care of you. But she was desperate. God had promised, I'm going to take care of you. She was desperate. You know what she did? Instead of turning to God, resting in the promises of God, she turned her back on God. and said, I'm going to get what I want when I want it. Abram, you marry Hagar, and we'll have a child with them. Folks, if you have a righteous desire... That's wonderful. If you have a righteous desire, that's wonderful. But if you try to fulfill that righteous desire unrighteously, then your righteous desire ceases to be righteous. There was nothing wrong with wanting a baby. 
As a matter of fact, God said, I'll give you one. But she went about it the wrong way. She ends up in Egypt. She's yearning, she's yearning, she's desiring. And if you go after something to neglect your relationship to God, something that's wrong, you end up with the same principles. After 10 years in Canaan, what did Abram and Sarah do? They turned their backs on God. The same place, the same principles, the same patience. What were they doing? They were waiting. Not at all. They were impatient. The Bible says in verse 3, And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. After Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. What did they do? They devised this plan and followed through. They devised this plan and followed through. They did not wait on the Lord. They did not rest in the Lord. And I want to encourage you tonight, if you're tempted, you say, I want to be married. Don't step outside of God's will to get something that's right. You say, I want to have children. Don't step outside of God's will in order to get something that God declares good. You say, I want to have this or I want to have that. If you can't obtain it righteously, it's not God's will and it's not God's time. Quite frankly, Abram and Sarai, because of their disobedience, made a big mess. You see, they followed through with their plan. They didn't wait on God. They made a huge mess. Have you ever heard of the Israeli-Arab conflict? You ever heard of that? You've probably heard it on the news today. It's been going on a long time. You want to see where it started? Right here. Hagar and Abram, Mary, they have a child. His name is Ishmael. And Ishmael is the father of, father of the modern day Muslims. Out of this disobedience came great sorrow Amen. and great trouble. And folks, I want to encourage you to do something. Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And live your life in the center of his will knowing that God will meet your need. After 10 years in Canaan, you did what? You say, preacher, you don't know how long I've been waiting. I'm looking over this crowd and I see folks that are, that are answers to long prayers. I'm glad you waited on the Lord. I look across this crowd and I see folks who I know are struggling with this and that. And I want you to be certain. The center of God's will is the perfect place for you and your family. And don't do something wrong in desperation trying to fix your problem. Please don't. Wait on the Lord. Trust in Him. He'll meet your every need. Don't be like Abram. And spend all this time doing the right thing just in time to turn your back on God and make a great big mess. You know what the product of disobedience is? In Abram's life, it started with family turmoil. Look what the Bible says in verse number four. And he went in unto Hagar, she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Where once there was peace at home, the efforts that Sarah and Abram made to get what they thought they needed caused great trouble in their home. You step outside the will of God, you're going to drive a wedge between you and your wife. You step outside the will of God, you're going to drive a wedge between you and your children. You step outside the will of God and fail to trust Him, you're going to cause great distress. And even worse, in Sarah and Abram's situation they caused a problem that persists to this moment and to this day and folks the decisions that you make they don't just affect you they affect your children 
and your children's children and your children's children's children. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on. May God help us. May God help us to dwell in the land of Canaan, resting in the person of Christ, knowing that God is faithful. After 10 years in Canaan, what should have Sarah and Abram done? They should have waited a few more. As a matter of fact, 14 more. (laughs) It was 14 more years until Abram and Sarah were blessed with a baby. But he was the perfect one. He was the heir. He was the line of Christ. And God worked miraculously. It may take a while to get what you think you need. But I want you to know something. While you're waiting, you don't need it. You have everything you need. You have the presence of God. You have the blessings of God, the promises of God. And by all means, if you've been in Canaan for 10 years, praise God and wait a little longer because he's not forgotten you. He will not fail you. May we learn from Abram tonight. After 10 years in Canaan, you did what? After 10 years in Canaan, with God's help, I want to keep trusting, keep resting, keep believing because I know this to be true. Jesus never fails. We can rest in him. Let's pray.